Welcome to our first COVID-19 Niagara update on your TV. You're used to the source bringing you coverage of local events across the region. Today we change focus with the source concentrating solely on the COVID-19 situation in Niagara. From our Niagara Falls studio, we'll check in with government officials, community leaders and everyday citizens, all of whom are dealing with the impact of the virus. Please stay tuned. We're very pleased at this point in time to have St. Catherine's Member of Parliament, Chris Biddle, joining us here on Your TV. Just announced uh, around 10.30 this morning by the federal government, $82 billion in stimulus funding uh, to help households and businesses. This $82 billion, certainly a lot more. How did that come about? We've been saying this for a while, that we've managed our books in such a way that we would have the firepower to respond to a crisis like this if we needed to, and uh, we're responding in kind with the financial firepower to uh, address the crisis, and that uh, for the amateur economists at home, it ends up being about 3% of our gross domestic product. Um, and so we want to ensure that once this crisis is over, that um, Canadians are in a good spot. And not only that, but they're taken care of throughout this crisis so that they don't have to make decisions about whether to go to work or take care of family and ensuring that public health and public safety and personal health is at the forefront of everyone's decision and that government will have their back. The $82 billion uh, amounts to about $27 billion of direct uh, support to Canadian households and businesses, another $55 billion in tax deferrals. Can you take us through some of the specific specifics of this. There's uh, an emergency care benefit and also an emergency support benefit. How do those work? Absolutely, and we'll be getting the details as we go forward, but Canadians aren't going to be left behind. We, we heard that, especially from those in the gig economy, freelance workers, workers in the arts community, that they wouldn't be covered if there were going to be major shutdowns. And so, well, we're announcing an emergency support benefit for every every two weeks. For 14 weeks, Canadians who aren't eligible for EI will be able to receive payments similar to EI. We're going to try to use existing programs to ensure that money gets out faster, so there will be an increase to the Canada Child Benefit for families who are eligible. If individuals are receiving GST tax credit, that will be increased as well, $300 uh, for an individual and $150 per person. We announced before $10 billion in funding through the Business Development Bank of Canada to ensure that businesses can apply for immediate uh, financial support and loans. There will be a small business uh, wage subsidy, up to 10% of a company's wage subsidy to ensure that they, they try to keep as many workers as they possibly can on the books. And although that's um, a wage subsidy that businesses will uh, benefit from, it really trickles down to their employees. Absolutely, and that's, and that's the goal. Like, and, and again, safety and health is our number one priority, but we want to ensure that as many Canadians as uh, can stay in the workforce do. I know uh, employers are going to have that challenge going forward, but government is going to be there to help them out. Now, a couple of the um, programs that I mentioned right off the top had the word emergency in them. Of course, yesterday, the Premier of Ontario, Doug Ford, announcing that Ontario is in a, an emergency state. But so far, Prime Minister Trudeau has not put us into a national state of emergency. I think the Prime Minister would tell you that this is an emergency and that's why there is emergency funding. Declaring an emergency under the Emergency Measures Act is a, is a different level. This was a replacement for the War Measures Act. If people remember from, it was a little bit before my time, but if people remember from the FLQ crisis in the 1970s, it allows unprecedented power. So right now the government feels that um, we have the ability to manage this crisis with the tools at our disposal. Nothing is off the table, the Prime Minister has said, but right now... Declaring an emergency under the Emergency Measures Act isn't necessary, but the situation has changed day to day, week to week, and we will keep all options on the table. The month of April is approaching, and for Canadians, 
That means tax time. There's some changes to how tax is going to be collected and when returns are going to be due, is there not? Absolutely. So June 1st will be uh, the extension as opposed to April 30th. So Canadians will have an extra month to file their taxes. As well, if you owe taxes, you will not be required to pay until August uh, August of 2020. And that's both for businesses and individuals. Big announcement as well from the Prime Minister today that the border between Canada and the U.S. will be shut down for all non-essential travel. It means that commerce, um, international trade will still continue. What happens to people who may be on vacation and need to get back? Are they guaranteed entry under these uh, new measures? Canadians are, Canadians are uh, allowed to return home, and we've, we've made that request of Canadians to return home. We, uh, as the situation is changing, it's best to take advantage of it as soon as possible. I know we've heard from many people who are having difficulty changing flights and getting here quicker, but Canadians will be allowed to return home. However, they will have to self-isolate for two weeks once they, once they do get back. Also with the border situation, there is a lot of concern in Niagara with the grape growers and other farmers and also the wineries that the offshore workers may not be able to arrive here on time to do the pruning and the trimming and all the other work that needs to be done this summer. Is there any plans to expedite that process? I've raised this concern um, with the Prime Minister's office. We have, they are fielding a lot of issues from across the economy in terms of pressing issues that need to be addressed as we go. It is, it is being discussed. I don't have an answer yet, unfortunately, and I hope to have one soon. There is a mention of the Farm Credit Canada boost. Is that designed to maybe help the farmers? Well, absolutely. They're, they're a business like any other. That is not going to be a replacement if you can't get your crop planted or uh, properly tend to it. But we want to ensure, and the Prime Minister said we were going to uh, have all Canadians' backs, and that's across the economy and across sectors, and farmers are included in that. Thank you very much for your time today, Chris, and uh, the $82 billion on top of the uh, other 10, bringing it to uh, $92 billion in funding to help during the COVID-19 crisis. Thanks for your time. Thanks, Mike.